Hey friends, Julie here and welcome to my channel. Today, I am going to be taking some Dollar Tree items to give some thrift store finds a farmhouse makeover. So let's get to DIYing. For the first one, I picked up this wooden box from my local Goodwill and I am going to give it a good sanding because there was a lot of wear and tear on it, scratches, some indents, and I just wanted it to be nice and smooth. Now this box is super cute. If you find something like this at your local thrift store, definitely pick it up. I love the fact that it could be hung or sitting on a tabletop. So after it's sanded and I've wiped it down, I'm going to give it a just one single good coat of the Rust-Oleum black paint. It's not chalk paint. It's just a paint and primer in one. And now that it is dry, I am going to take one of these wooden pieces. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but they're, they're in the craft section at Dollar Tree. And I pulled it all apart because I wanted to just use these wooden pieces. I'm going to be making a frame for the front of this box. So I just marked it with a pencil where I needed it cut and my husband so kindly cut them for me. Now, with just spraying it with a spray paint, it you could still see where all the sand marks were. I'm not exactly sure what I did wrong, but I decided to try a full coat of the chalkboard paint and see if that smooths it out, and it really did. The entire thing, all the surface, the color looks the same. Like, you can kind of see on the top here, you can't see any of the sand marks for some reason after I used the chalkboard paint. And I did use a foam brush instead of a regular brush because I didn't want brush strokes either. I want it to be completely smooth. And it only took one coat of the chalkboard paint. And then while that's drying, I took some stain. It's just called Early American and I stained the wooden pieces. Now I am doing what's called seasoning the chalkboard and I'm only doing it to the front because that's where the chalkboard will actually be used. And basically you just put a nice layer of the chalk, you let it sit, you wipe it off and you could do another layer and then you could wash it off. Now I am going to be putting the word herbs on the front of mine and I just printed it out on my printer, used some chalk on the back of it and I'm going to just trace it on to the board. And I'm just eyeballing the center. If you want to be really, really particular, go ahead and measure. But I like to do things kind of quickly, and so I just eyeballed it. And I have found, taping it obviously is very important, but I have found that using the tip of one of the mechanical pencils is a really good way to trace these words. I've made other signs and stuff, but to trace it on um, with a nice hard point and not having to use like a pen or something. So that's what I'm using. And I am just gonna trace the word on to the front of my box. And you could do this with even the boxes at the Dollar Tree. This is a universal idea. And then I'm just gonna take a chalk marker and I'm going to trace it. And then I take, once that ink has dried, I took just a wet Q-tip to kind of pick up the little bits of dust from when I traced the word onto the box. And then I am just going to lay out my pieces to make sure that before I actually glue anything down, I have it laid out the way I want and that everything actually fits the way I envisioned it fitting. And I am just going to be using some clear Gorilla Glue. You could use E6000 or any other kind of permanent glue. I just didn't want, I just really want this to be permanent, so I did not use um, a hot glue gun, but definitely you could just use a hot glue gun. And I'm just going to glue the frame onto the box. Today is the Friend Friday Hop hosted by my dear friend Heidi Sambel and there are several of us and we are all sharing some farmhouse DIYs with you. So you're going to want to be sure to check out the link down in my description box to hop over to the next crafter and you will continue along until you have gotten back to my channel. That's how you know that you've hopped around every channel. 
Now for the next DIY, I am going to take this tray and I am going to give it a complete farmhouse makeover. So to begin, I am going to paint the entire thing with white paint. I am just using Adirondack by Waverly. This is a chalk paint and I'm going to cover the entire thing with one coat of the chalk paint. Now, there were some drips and stuff. I just got a little, I think, thick with the paint. So I sanded it off and even had to scrape some of it off. And I'm going to definitely have to give it more coats. I'm just gonna use some of this leftover. It's Whisper White by Bear because I ran out of chalk paint after this project. So I gave it a coat of that. And again, it was still dripping, especially around the handles. Like, I don't know, I could not get it to work with a, painting it with a brush. So that's where some spray paint is going to come in. So I'm just giving it a couple of coats of white flat spray paint. And then once it is completely dry, I am going to be giving it a, it's called a grain sack stripe. It's basically like the kind of stripes you'd see in vintage old grain sacks. And I am just gonna use some washi tape because it's sticky enough to give me good lines, but I didn't have to worry about it pulling up the paint. And then I'm gonna do a second stripe about a half an inch apart. And then I'm going to make, I think they call them like tick stripes, but it's basically just a really small stripe on both sides of the thick stripe. So you're gonna need four pieces of the tape overall to get the right look. And then I am just going to use the chalkboard paint again, and I am going to use a foam brush and I'm going to give it two coats. I did one coat and I let that coat completely dry before I did the second coat. Then once the paint was not completely dry, but almost dry, I did take off all the tape let the paint completely dry and I am going to be using this grains stencil that I picked up from Amazon. I will link it down in my description box below if you're interested and I'm kind of centering it and then just pull, eyeballing how far down I want it. I'm just going to be using the grains and then the type day number 45. I'm not using all of this and I'm also not going to actually stencil it with paint. I'm going to trace it with my pencil because I just don't want a chance having bleed through. And then once I have it all traced out, I am just going to take a black paint marker and I am going to trace over it and fill it all in and then let that dry. Now I do not want this to look so crisp and freshly painted, so I am going to take some sandpaper and lightly sand it just to kind of rough it up. It, it didn't, I didn't sand it so that all the wood would shine through or come through, but just so that it wasn't a bright black and it kind of blended in some of the sharp lines. For this next DIY, I found this basket at my local thrift store, but if you have a basket that needs a makeover, this is perfect. I am going to be using some of this green paint. This is a paint that I did get from Goodwill, so I will link it down below for you. And I am going to give the entire thing just one coat. I don't really mind if some of the wood from the original basket color shines through. I just want it to get a, a nice green coat. I'm kind of obsessed with this green, actually. And I picked up some of this um, I'm not exactly sure what kind of ribbon it is, but it's like a fabric ribbon also from Amazon So I will link that and I cut a piece that's long enough to just fit around this top rim 
and I want to make this I want to make this so that it can be changed whether seasonally or just because maybe I don't want the ribbon anymore so I'm actually not gonna glue the ribbon to the basket I'm just gonna glue the ribbon to the ribbon as tight as I can so that it stays in that top spot and I'm just going to do it with some hot glue And just like the box that we made over, I love when something could be hung or it can sit on a table. It's I just love when you can do a couple different things with an item. And I'm going to also make kind of like a faux bow, I'm just crossing over the two loops. I'm going to glue that together and then I'm going to take a small piece and glue that around the center. Kind of like this and again i'm just going to use hot glue to attach all of the pieces together To finish this basket off, I am actually just going to be using some Dollar Tree florals. I got some white hydrangea, some white lilacs, or maybe it's lavender, white lavender. I don't remember what exactly it was, but I just grabbed some white flowers from the Dollar Tree, bent the stems so that I didn't have to cut them and fit them how I wanted in the basket. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Here on my channel, I like to share budget-friendly DIYs using either Dollar Tree items or thrift store makeovers. So if you like that kind of thing, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you are over on Instagram, you can find me at Magpie Designs by Julie. For this next DIY, I actually picked up this very cute small old window from Facebook Marketplace. I got it for $7, which I think is a great deal. And the only problem is, is that one of the window panes was cracked. And when I was getting it ready to show you guys how to take the paint out, it actually broke. But I am basically just gonna score the backside of the window all the way around each of the window panes. And I also use a flathead screwdriver just to kind of clean it up. But that's how I got the window or the glass panes out of the window. So if you come across an old window that's broken, don't think, oh, it's trash. Like you could totally make it over. You don't even have to do anything with it other than take out the glass. Next, using the screwdriver, I'm just going to remove this metal piece at the bottom. I just basically stuck it up underneath the nails and pulled it up and it came off very easily. And then I'm gonna remove the two hinges that are on the side of the window, but I am going to leave the lock because the lock is really cool looking. Now I do give it a little bit of a sand. I don't want to take off more of the paint necessarily but there it is really rough on the backside and this is probably going to be hanging on the wall so I did want to smooth out the backside and I did do a little bit of edge distressing on the front Now I did also pick up this chicken wire off of Amazon, so I will link it below for you. It was very affordable, very easy to cut. I just used regular um, scissors, and I'm just going to cut out four pieces to fit into where the window panes were, and I'm going to just staple them in to the edges. Now, 
After it was done, I'm looking at the chicken wire and honestly, it looks so new and shiny and I didn't like that. So I'm going to take some of this gel stain that I had, but you could also just use any kind of wood stain, even probably some brown watered down paint. And I'm just going to brush it all over the chicken wire to make it look older. And now that the paint is dry, I am going to distress the edges of this wooden wall to hanger. Finish I don't really off, know what to finish this off, I added some really small little clothespins to hang pictures. But I'm not stressing it like anything But crazy. honestly, I'm just you don't need sanding that. down and all the edges really lightly so a little bit of the wood and a small comes wreath. I also picked up this little wall hanging. It looks like it was probably handmade by somebody. And I decided to bring it home and see what I could do with it. Honestly, I wasn't exactly sure when I bought it at the store. But once I got home, I envisioned it being a little bit more farmhouse than it is. So I gave it a good sand to get rid of all the paint. And I am going to give it a couple coats of Rust-Oleum white paint that is flat. So it's not actually chalk paint, but it doesn't have a shiny sheen to it. While the paint is drying, I decided to use four of the large popsicle sticks. I cut off the ends on both sides, and I'm going to stain them in early American. And now that the paint is dry, I am going to distress the edges of this wooden wall hanger. I don't really know what to call it, but I'm not distressing it like anything crazy. I'm just sanding down the edges lightly so a little bit of the wood comes through. I am now going to take some Gorilla Glue and I am going to glue the wooden popsicle sticks onto the top of this to cover up the kind of rounded details at the top. Once I hung it, I realized I did not like the squared off look at the top. So you can kind of see here, I did take just a pair of regular scissors and trimmed the top popsicle stick so that the edges were rounded at the top. Please let me know down in the comments which one of these DIYs was your favorite. Don't forget to check out the link down in my description box so you can hop to the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.